Hello to A and welcome to our biographical crash course on Jane Eyre. To start off, let's talk about what a biographical approach to a work of literature is. A biographical approach is when a reader looks at what aspects of the author's life are present and incorporated into the novel and how those aspects influence the meaning of the novel. For Jane Eyre, we will be looking at what aspects of Charlotte Bronte's life are present in the book and how they are portrayed. Essentially, Jane Eyre is the story of what Charlotte Bronte wanted her life to become. All the major events are the same, however, there are times where she's altered the outcome of an event. So it plays out the story it plays out the way she wanted to in her life. Then there's Jane, the brave outspoken woman Charlotte wished she could have been. Because it was unthought of for a woman to be adventurous or opinionated with ideas, they were controversial to society. Charlotte transformed herself into Jane and uses her as a conduit to express her beliefs and represent herself. The two have very similar origin stories. Charlotte's parents died when she was young, as Jane's had. Both girls went to a former school in their youth, known as Lowood, in Jane Eyre, where they, were, where they underwent terrible treatment from those above them in the school ranks. <clears throat> tragedy, str tragedy struck at the school for both Charlotte, who lost her sister to an outbreak, and Jane, who lost Helen, a friend who was almost a sister to her. In later years, Jane left her mundane place at Lowood to become a governess. At Thornfield Hall, Jane falls for her ugly employer, Mr. Rochester, who upon their first encounter at Thornfield actually calls ugly to his face. That charming and honest manner she held is what made Rochester return her affections. He says to her, I asked to pass through life at my side to be my second self and best earthly companion. Unfortunately, Charlotte wasn't as lucky as Jane in the love department. After leaving her formative school, she took up the position of governess and fell deeply in love with her married employer. Let's not forget Bertha all left up in the attic. Charlotte's employer didn't return her love as Rochester did for Jane, but Jane Eyre isn't just an upgraded, more interesting version of Bronte's life. The book also serves as a political platform for Charlotte to convey her crazy ideas about women being involved in society, free love, not the 60s version, and women being equal to men. Crazy, right? But look at Rochester and Jane's relationship. One, he's her employer. Two, he's a man. And three, he's rich. This relationship shouldn't exist most of all with the level of equality and partnership that's at play. In a heated moment, Jane tells Rochester she is no longer being formal with him, but addressing him as equal as we are. In Rochester's response, he agrees and kisses her. This relationship transcends the class restrictions of poor only marrying poor and rich marrying rich, but also breaks down the passive role of women in the Victorian era to give us a more cat and mouse relationship where both parties taunt and tease and flirt. Charlotte advocates for the rights of children who are mistreated by adults simply because they can. Jane is an opinionated child who is abused by her cousins and aunt who blame her for everything that goes wrong even if it isn't her fault. For example, when John Reed hits Jane with a book, Jane is the one who is taken away and punished. In a last ditch effort to fight back against her cold aunt, she recent, who recently lied to Mr. Brocklehurst about Jane's character, she says, I am not deceitful. If I were, I should say I love you. The biggest political statement we get out of Jane Eyre is that women should participate in society and be free to experience life outside of the home. Charlotte's belief in this is strongly represented throughout the novel through quotes like, Women are supposed to be very calm generally, but women feel just as men feel. They need exercise for their faculties and a field for their efforts as much as their brothers do. They suffer too rigid a restraint. Or, it is thoughtless to condemn them or laugh at them if they seek to do more or learn more than custom has pronounced necessary for their sex. Charlotte's internal struggle with wanting freedom from her position in life is made abundantly clear through the adventuring seeking Jane who frequently vocalizes her desires like on page 130 when she says, I long for a power of vision which might overpass that limit, which might re reach the busy world, towns, regions full of life that I had heard of but never seen. Charlotte couldn't express her desires or voice her opinions in any way that would bring her satisfaction unless it was on a large scale. Hence Jane Eyre being that she'd never been an active member in society or traveled, she's the only basis she had for life.